Okay, welcome to part two of this uh, examination of stellar spectra. Um, the section we're going to look at today looks at explaining how the chemical composition of a star can be determined from a star spectrum. Last uh, video, last podcast, we looked at Wien's displacement law, which is given here, and how we can find from the overall shape of the spectrum uh, the temperature of the black body object, in our case stars, normally that produced it. Um, but you will have remembered that there were some other details present there. Um, and these details uh, were first observed by William Hyde Wollaston in 1802, but uh, Josef von Fraunhofer, working in, in Germany uh, a few years later, did the first real scientific survey of these dark lines in the sun, these absorption lines, as we now know they are. At the time, they didn't know what they were, and they call called, in honor of him, he was called them sun lines um, in German. But we call them Fraunhofer lines in honor of the big guy himself. Uh, so here is a uh, snapshot from his original report, um, his original plates. <clears throat> and you can see here, this is part of the spectrum, this is sort of what, and this is grey, actually would be yellow, I think, behind. And here are the, the prominent lines. Here's a nice portrait of the man himself. And you see the Planck curve here with certain lines marked. And here is a stellar spectrum with lines, although I have a suspicion it might be the wrong way round. I think red should have been down here, yellow here, and, and blue up here. But that's just my suspicion. Um... So yes, Fraunhofer observed the sun, and he observed these uh, these sun lines. But he also uh, there you go, sun and Nichter. Uh, he also did observe the stars. Here he's made reference to lines of Sirius, and he's also in this extract discussing uh, and Venus over here as well. He's also discussing um, how the lines are different. So he was our first stellar spectra getter. But he couldn't really, you know, he thought they were a curiosity and he was interested, but he didn't know what they were. He didn't understand that. And that actually didn't happen for another uh, 50 or 40 years or so. And uh, Kirchhoff and Bunsen, also working in, in Germany in 1859, uh, established by experiments that these were the referred to as chemical elements. They, they did this in the laboratory. But they knew about Fraunhofer lines and made the connection. So here you see an extract from their report, uh, a letter to the Berlin Physical Association, Fraunhofer and Atmosphere der Sun, and Natrium Linien. Um, natrium, you might not be familiar with the German, but you should be familiar with Na as an elemental symbol. Natrium is sodium. And so here again is a, a, a version of the spectrum, and um, here are the elements. And uh, Fraunhofer labeled the main lines by letters of the alphabet G, F, little b, big D, C. And although we now know uh, much more what they are, this is linear D, the sun and spectrum, we now know that this is sodium. Okay, and we still, but we still call it the D line. Uh, Bohr, um, and later actually explained why these lines exist, and they're all to do with uh, electron transitions. But we don't actually, in this topic, really, really need to know about that. What we just need to know is that these lines record the spectrum of a star. Uh, this is the visual of the spectrum from our own sun. Uh, imagine each of these rows taken out and then put in a big line, and you'd see a very expanded version of our sun spectrum, which makes the lines much more obvious. We look at the stellar spectra, and you should recognize this slide from the previous lab. Um, again, here is the Planck curve, but on, superimposed on that is, well, there's a lot of noise as well, because this is a real-world experiment. There are also deep gaps corresponding to hydrogen, corresponding to magnesium, compared to sodium. Remember, see that D, sodium D line, uh, compared to calcium, etc., etc. So... That's what it looks like in a real star spectrum. So what we can tell from this is what the composition of that star is. Technically, what we're looking at here is the star's atmosphere. 
Um, the photosphere of a star is the boundary of a star, technically, where it becomes transparent or opaque. Um, and it gives off light at the boundary. And that's the, the cause of our continuous spectrum. Um, and then shining through the stellar atmosphere is the uh, superimposed on it the lines from the uh, elements present in the stellar atmosphere. In something as hot as our sun or hotter, it is going to be just elements. For fainter stars, it could be, and often is, molecules. Titanium oxide becomes very important as you get a lot colder. One other thing we do have to be a little bit aware of in real-world observations is that the interstellar medium, the space between stars, is not completely empty. And uh, sometimes we have, uh, we have to be careful about superimposed uh, elements from that interstellar medium. Okay, thank you very much.